Okay, back with Jason. Jason's going to show us some more about sequences this week. I think the last one went over pretty well. And now we're going to talk a little bit about actually building out sequence and some of the options. Uh, if you have a chance, go back and watch the other video where we kind of talked about what a sequence is, why you use it, how it works from a front end standpoint. And today we're going to talk about how to build sequences and how to edit sequences. And I don't think we're really going to create a sequence here, but we're going to go into an existing one because the options are the same. We're going to just show how to add a step or two um, into the sequence. Is that right, Jason? That's great. Yes. Yeah. I'll at least show you a way to get to creating a new sequence and the options that you have in there, like the entities, so that you can see that. But then I'll go into the lead nurturing uh, sequence and we'll change it from there. That sounds great. Let's So why don't we just start with that? And again, for those of you who haven't yet, go check that other one out first because the last one that we did together about sequences and how to use them really explains why you should be using them if you're not. You're missing out on a huge benefit of, of Microsoft Dynamics if you're not using them. Yep. All right. Thanks, Over Pete. to you, Jason. Yeah, over here you can see I'm in the Sales Insights Settings area again, so bottom left-hand corner. That's where you need to be. And then in the sequence, uh, you can see I'm in the sequence sitemap uh, option. So what I want to do is I want to show you what it looks like in the entities that you have as an option to create a sequence because they aren't there for all entities yet. So hopefully in the future, we'll get it for all entities and custom entities as well. So for now, I'm just going to click on new sequence. And then you could specify if you want to use a template so you can see there's a couple of templates that you have just showing you quickly this one you can see is linked to the contact it has uh, a maximum of completion days which is five um, so it does give you a little bit more information if you use a template uh, you can see this is an account renewal with a lot more steps it's a 13 steps and then the record type is account i'm just going to show you if i do want to start one from blank not from a template the options that it gives you so you get a sequence name and then a description of the sequence. And then what I want to show you is the record top. So these are the entities that you get with sequences. So it's leads, opportunities, accounts, and contacts. Okay. So I'll go back out of this. I'll X out. I'm then going to open the sequence that we've discussed in the previous call, which is the lead nurturing sequence. I'm going to open this sequence. And then I need to edit it, right? So I can either deactivate it or I can just hit edit sequence. So I'm just going to say edit kind sequence. Of, yep. Sorry, go ahead, Pete. Uh, tacking on to your last point about creating sequences, um, right there at the top of this, obviously this thing is called lead nurturing sequence, but it also says connected leads. So um, how would I tell, though, what entity it's, it's connected to uh, if I wasn't sure? Yeah, so that's a good question, Pete. So basically, let me quickly get to it. Uh, if you go to properties, you'll see, see right that there. the name of this. So it's basically grayed out and then the record type. And you also see the owner of this sequence as well. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And it's good that you mentioned the connected leads because if it's a sequence that you wanted to edit, you can actually see what is connected to this as well. And again, you could see the progress and all of that. Um, link to the sequence as well the current step the amount of days all of the fun things okay so going back Perfect. to the designer i'm gonna then click edit sequence and i can always select don't show this message again it's just a warning that i'm making changes to an active sequence so i'm just going to click okay that's perfect so i want to enhance the sequence and i have a plan of what i want to add uh, but we could also add something specific that you want pete so i'm going to be adding actions to the left hand side so let's say we've made a phone call uh, we've set up a meeting so we have the complete task of setting up a meeting now i want to take it one or two steps further right so i'm going to be adding additional actions so i'm going to click on new add action right and i can then select i did show it briefly in the previous uh podcast as well as the options that we have so we have steps conditions commands and then the linkedin piece which you need a sales navigator license for so obviously i can then say okay well i want to set another wait time or i can make a phone call again like after the meeting that we've had with the customer one thing that i want to do right is let's say the meeting has happened 
I want to then update this leads rating, right? Because now it's not, we've had a meeting with a customer. It's not going to be cold anymore. We, got, we want to make it warm, right? So I'm going to add a command and I'm going to say update a field. And I can then select the field on the right hand side. Like I can choose the field that I want to edit, right? So you do have a limited amount of fields. Like you don't get all the fields on the lead entity. They are limited as well. So I'm going to go down all the way to rating. Can I interject with a question? Yeah. Any what is the limitation based on? Is it drop down values? Is it select values? Yeah. What are the limitations? So I believe the limitation is any uh, string field. So like any text field, uh, any uh, Boolean field. So yes, no. And then any uh, option set field. I don't believe you can edit lookup fields like the A no or something like that. Yeah. I see. And who knows? I mean, Microsoft may add that into a future date, but it's good to know what the parameters are and so you can build this out. So this is great. Definitely. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and update that rating? Yeah. So I'm going to select the rating field and then it gives me a drop down because it's a uh, drop down field. I can then update it to cold, warm, or hot. I'm going to update it to warm for now because I think that it's, it's not a hot lead yet, right? Because we're still in the early stages of uh, finding out information and what they are interested. So I'll add it to warm. And let's say I want to take it one step further. I want to take it up until where it becomes a hot lead. So how would I go about that, right? So I have an idea. I want to add another action beneath this, and I'm going to add a condition, right? And the condition that I'm going to add is going to be a business process stage condition. And you'll see what I'm getting at now. So if I add this business mm -hmm. process stage condition, it basically links to the lead business process flow. So that thing at the top of the leads the, uh, with the blue color, I think it's with the blue color and the new look, that's your business process flow, right? So now it has multiple stages. So what I'm going to do is it's going to use if the advanced path is to yes. So I'm going to select the lead to opportunity sales process and the stage I'm going to select as propose right so it's now not in qualify or develop anymore it's moving to propose so when i move it to propose i'm going to re-add and update the rating field right to hot because now we are proposing so it, you might have additional steps in between but i'm just going to update it to hot for now so if the business process stage is propose then add an action do a command again Update the field, choose the field. I'm going to choose rating again. I'm going to go with hot. You're going to turn it to hot then if they're at that stage. That's correct, yes. So I'm going to turn it to hot, and there we go. It's as easy as that. Now, I can also go to the no branch and then continue from there. Let, let me br break this down for people that just to explain it in my own words. So what's happening here is you have a lead that you're nurturing. It goes to a certain point where they've opened an email, you've had a phone call with them, and then when you go to have that phone call, it's going to automatically update the field of the rating. Then at some later point, maybe on the phone call, maybe later on, you move them forward in the business process stage from lead to qualify to actually sending them a proposal. And once you do that, this is a way that you can now say this is hot because you just sent them a proposal, now they're hot. So this is kind of like replacing a few other functions in Dynamics, because in the past, what you do is you'd have a business process or a Power Automate that would watch to see if that process stage had moved to a different stage, and then you do an automation. But you can do it right here in sequences, if I'm reading this right. You can do it right here in sequences. That's correct, yes. So that's really cool, because then, it, like again, it's all about you know, the streamlining your processes and having everything that's important tip to tail to take a lead from a lead to hopefully an opportunity or close lost if that's the way it goes. But you have all these pieces in one place instead of having to go to business processes for this one automation, go to power automate for another automation. It's all going to be right here in the sequence. Exactly. Yeah. And the nice thing is later on, we'll talk about predictive scoring with leads as well. So the rating ties to the predictive scoring and also the amount of interactions that you have with your lead. So I'm not going to touch on that now, but there is a key to the predictive scoring as well and updating that and then also showing a little bit of analytics and if the lead 
is going down or upwards based on the interactions. So I'm not going to talk about it too much that's because it's cool. very exciting as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. All yeah. right, cool. Yeah, so what we've done now is we've updated the field. When the meeting is set up, we've updated it again to warm. We did a business process flow check as well. If it goes to propose, it's updating it to hot. But now let's say I want to take it even further. So I want to kick off a different sequence with this sequence. So I've mentioned that on the previous call, you can basically start a new sequence with a exit from an old sequence or a sequence that has been completed. So I'm oh, going to then hear you say that in the last call. So I'm glad you're saying it again. Yeah. So you can actually <laughs> kick off a whole new sequence. So once you qualify the lead, I guess where you're probably going is you can then kick off a sales sequence of some sort. Exactly. Yeah. So then I that's can kick off cool. a sequence. So I'm going to do a command again. And then the command is going to be advanced to another sequence and see how easy it is. So when I have the sequence oh set up, gosh. I can just select it in the drop down and it goes into another sequence. It's as easy as that. Unfortunately, I don't have anything now, but you just saw how easy it is to create one. So, yeah. It's yeah. And this isn't meant to replace anybody's like a full build out of a sequence. So I think just understanding that you can do that is huge. That's like pretty darn cool. Exactly. Yeah, no, uh, this is a lot of fun to build out. I like the way it's displayed with the ERD uh, view. Like, it's very easy to read. It's re very easy to pick it up. Like, if you've never looked at something like this and you are a new uh, sales manager and you want to set up a sequence, it's very easy to set up. And and for those people that aren't super technical, an ERD is just an entity relationship diagram. It's just a way of, like, putting boxes on the screen and connecting them in a like with lines like this and so that you can kind of easily see an overview of how the information flows. Yeah. I am curious, Jason, if you can go back into adding a step, I had a question about some of those steps and if you wouldn't mind walking me through some of these things, like what is AB testing? How, cause AB testing is huge. I do a lot of marketing and you know, I want to test out different emails or different subject lines or points that I want to make in a phone call. Is that basically what this is? doing like how does an a b test here relate to a sequence yeah so unfortunately you do need a premium license i haven't looked at this so i will need to take a look oh, at okay, it and fair. then get back to you uh, on that i think that's fair a lot of our customers um don't have premium licenses so it's good to know that that's a piece of functionality that they just won't be able to do um, yeah. but if they are interested we can obviously talk them through that yep no exactly what, what about some of these other things so Complete a task. So I assume that would put a task on someone's, just like on the last call, we put a phone call and sent an automatic email. You can put a task out on people's calendars. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. You can have a task and then it gives you the title and the subject. So if I select it, I can quickly show you what it's asking for. It's asking for the title and then again, the description. So you want to put a detailed description in here, not just like create meeting or something like that. Put a little bit of context into it. Like it needs to, it needs to show the uh, salesperson what they actually need to do. That makes sense. The only thing I it's a little confusing is the terminology "complete a task." It's not really completing the task, right? It's actually just putting a task on your activities yeah. Yeah. Uh, list. Yeah, yeah. it's just so it's, putting... it's saying, "Hey, this is a, a task you should complete." Yeah. So it, it does actually open up the task. Like if you do the complete the task, it does open it up and then you can complete and add functions to it. But yes, it puts it on your calendar. Yeah. That's really cool. So can we go back to that list? I want to see if there's yes. any other ones that pop out at me. Um, we'll send an email. It's pretty obvious. You can also send text messages through this. Yeah. Uh, I believe if the Omni channel is set up, you have the option of doing a text message and it's based on text message template so there is some merge functionality as there and there as well yeah that's really cool because i know a lot of our customers are b2b and they're not quite doing text messages just yet but i know the b2c customers out there and some b2b are now relying on text messages so it's good to know that's there yeah other than that this is all uh, you mentioned the set wait time in the last one i like that yes. feature a lot because you don't want to spam people with 10 messages in a row you want to give them some breathing room so if you're doing like an email a series of emails to check interest or drive interest yeah pace them out like a week after a week after a week after this is going to be a really strange question jason can you do newsletters through here i don't think you would want to because you'd want to use the customer insights marketing module yeah. or 
another way but could you do a newsletter here like a once a month newsletter unfortunately not so there's no like timer that kicks off the automation like the wait conditions is more for manual tasks that needs to be actioned you would use the marketing module for that so but you could probably set a field so there's a way of doing it with a bit of customization like updating a field like set a newsletter or something like that and that fires a power automate so there's multiple ways of doing it i, I won't get into the weeds uh too much. Well, that's what I get for <laughs> asking a question I didn't know the answer to. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously though, it is it is good to know because to kind of paraphrase for the folks that, um, at home and tell me if I get this wrong, what this is going to do is it this isn't really automating things. What it's doing is queuing up tasks for the salespeople to execute. So what it's really doing is is saying, okay, now your next step in this sequence, and we discussed all this last time. The next step for this particular lead or this account or this contact or this opportunity is this. And it gives you like a list of all the things that you need to do, but you still need to do those things. It's the system isn't just automatically firing and you can have it automatically fire some things, but that would be done through power automate, I would assume, or, yes. or traditional business processes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it does do some sort of automation, but it doesn't make it fully automated. Yeah, and I don't think we really need to talk about the LinkedIn pieces because most of our customers do not have the LinkedIn integration just yet. It is a great tool, but for a lot of people, it's just overkill for them. Maybe at some point, though, the two of us can do a LinkedIn video and just show kind of what those func that functionality looks like for people. Yep, no, of course, we could definitely do that. Do you want me to jump into the conditions? There's not a lot of conditions. Yeah, So. yeah, I do because, yeah. I mean, you already kind of showed the business process stage, but the field value, I mean, intuitively, I would say it's probably allowing me to check a value and then do something based on that value. That is correct. Yes. So this ties Phew. into, let's say, for example, I'll quickly build out something just quickly on the fly, if that's okay. So I'm going to do a check field yeah, yeah. value and then I'll choose the field. Let's say I can actually choose the field hot or warm and based on that, do something. But let's use something different. Let's use not annual revenue, but let's use estimated revenue. So let me get to estimated value. There we go. So let's say estimated value is greater than $50,000, right? A lot of money. So this would be the estimated value of this opportunity with this lead. That's correct, yes. And let's say it's greater than 50, right? I can then say if it's greater than 50, then I could again fire another sequence that's tied to somebody different, like a sales manager, because it's a big deal. Or I could basically send a separate email or whatever. The options are unlimited. So there's a lot of things you could do with it. One thing that I do want to get back to quickly is if I do this field, I want to show you the advanced option that you have. So you have this if advanced path to yes is greater than $50,000, but you could also do advanced. And this will look familiar to people. It's basically the filters that's on the views as well. So it's using an mm -hmm. and. So I could do where the estimated value is greater than 50,000 and the owner does not equal Peter Wolf, as an example, then send it to somebody different. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. And yeah. for those of you who aren't really familiar with this screen we do have a video on creating views and queries so you should check out our channel and, and i might as well say at this moment take a chance right now or take a moment right now to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming content but yeah this is very familiar yeah i'll just cancel out of this so yeah, this has been really useful oh yeah sorry jason do you have other things you want to show not like, really no just over overwhelming how easy it is to be honest like it's so simple yeah why do i even need to call you jason why can't you give me the power to do this myself you know we don't allow you to change things in crm pete <laughs> i don't get i don't i am not allowed but as a customer if you're watching this we will train you to be as self-sufficient as you want to be yeah. definitely Hopefully this has given some people some really cool ideas. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. We could definitely give you some rights to do it. Like not everything, but we could give you some rights. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's super I easy. I know better than to get back in the kitchen and, and inter interfere with the chefs making the delicious meals. So trust me, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. No, again, I just want to say, Pete, it's very easy to do. Like you don't need to be trained on this a lot. Like we could very easily help a customer to get this up and running, do a bit of training on it. But 
you don't need advanced training. You don't need to spend like two days, three days learning on how to do this. It's very self-intuitive as well. I think to that point too, something that's really important that I like to explain to customers and prospects is that you don't need to be perfect from day one. What you just did here was you added some steps into a process and it's very easy to do that. Like a lot of people think that they need to spend days and weeks figuring out their perfect processes. I don't think that's a reality. What you should do is start with a simple process, see what's working, add steps, add conditions, add wait times. You can always, you can start with a three-stage process and then over time just expand it into like a, this massive decision tree based on the different things that you need. And then you could change those things. You could prune uh, elements of the tree that no longer apply. Like if you discontinue a product line and you don't want to send a lead down to Jason to follow up on because you don't service that product anymore. Yeah. Like you could choose to prune things, add things, uh, tweak things, morph things. Like it's, it's not all or nothing. You don't have to let the perfection get in the way of getting some automation in and streamlining your processes. It's so easy to get started and it's so easy to adapt as you go. Yeah, no, definitely. Look at me. I only learned how to do this today. I only learned what dynamics really? is today. Yeah. Really? You're brand new? No. I'm pr- Jason is a <laughs> fountain of knowledge. You learned at least a week ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, not a week ago, but yeah, it's very, very easy to do. It. <laughs> it's a lot of fun as well. Like doing these things is a lot of fun. So I do enjoy well, it. Well, I think that's a great place to end this. And hopefully people will take those words and start playing around themselves or they can give us a call, obviously, to help them. Um, but really, I appreciate you showing me this. Like I did know a lot about sequences, but I learned a lot here from you uh, with this session and the last session. So thanks a lot, Jason. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to our next call. Thanks, Pete. Me too. Bye, guys. See you.